Hello, welcome to the interview here on France Van Katla. Well, when my guest today started to protest male domination in her native Ukraine, she chose street performance, wearing a price tag to protest against the sex industry. Now, she got some people's attention, but not enough. So Ina Shevchenko and her fellow activists tried a different approach. They stripped in front of the media. Now, a few years on, Ina is based here in Paris. She's a leading activist in Femin, a group you may have heard of. It's known across Europe, much of the world now, for their bare-breasted approach to female empowerment. Now, bearing their breasts to everyone from Vladimir Putin to the Pope, the group has gotten lots of people talking. But it's also provoked a backlash from critics who say that their crude use of nudity hurts their cause and ultimately buries their message. Welcome to our uh, studios today, Ina. Hello. When I told people I was interviewing you, they didn't say, oh, they're the ones who protest against religion and dictators and the sex industry. People said to me, oh, they're the ones who bear their breasts and shock people. If your breasts could talk to you, Ina, do you ever think they might say, wait a minute here, you don't have to take off your shirt. Is this really the best way to get our message across? It's the only one I can say for you. Because we are the movement that, um, that was based, again, I would say we were based on our personal feelings. And we tried everything for, let's say, these five years. Today, by the way, is the uh, birthday of feminine movement. Fifth where, anniversary. Yes. <laughs> so um, I can say that during these five years, we uh, tried to reach attention of people all over the world to women's problem, to our mm. problem, to my own problem, too. And we tried different ways, classical, and we also realized that it doesn't work anymore. So we realized that if you want uh, ideology as feminists to be alive, you have to rethink it. You have to change something. You have to find a new, a new form, a new cover. And this is what we tried. We tried different ways. And once we realized that we have to rethink feminism by itself, when you're fighting with all feminists, they were fighting always with women treated as a sex object. Mm. But they were denying their sexuality. We just... we realize that key is in our sexuality. Why? But, because it's always in other but, hands and we take uh, it back to I, our to rightful owner. I got that, but bear with me here. Um, excuse, that's a play on words, I suppose. Bear with me. Uh, <laughs> you, you, some people would say that you're actually objectifying the female body, that you are doing exactly what a lot of perhaps earlier feminists said you should not be doing. You, you say you're doing it at a good cause to get the attention, so people will focus. Not at all. But you're also turning your body no. into an object. Not at all. We are giving new interpretation to naked body. Everyone always make equal between naked woman and prostitute, naked woman and sex object. We're saying, no, let's stop it. We have a new meaning. We're, we're giving new meaning, new, new use for women's body. Now, to be naked is the way to express myself. Now, we are transforming naked body to our weapon. And it doesn't work anymore to, pro to promote mm. yogurt or Ferrari car. It works to promote my own idea about my own freedom. OK, I understand. You're not using your body as a sex object, just the opposite. That's and not the crashing, idea. And we are crashing this way the idea about naked body as a sex but, object. But, you know, let me ask you. Um, you know, and obviously I'm the stiff one here in the suit and the tie and every, everything, you know. There are tons of women who have done amazing things for women's rights around the world who have kept their clothes on and who've done a lot. And there are some critics who will say to you, Ina, you and your activists, you're very well intentioned, but aren't you doing a disservice to these women who fight really hard for the cause and now you trivialize, trivialize in a way what they're doing? Um, I would say that it's never a question which form have to have to win. We are not starting something new, we're just adding. There are a lot of generals in feminism mm. and they're fighting between each other, but there are no soldiers. We are a group of soldiers. We are going in the street and we are fighting. Yes, there are a lot of uh, very amazing and very useful uh, works were done. They write books that we are reading by ourselves. Mm. We activists who are, who are doing our actions in the 
street and we need it. But feminism has only one side. It's only academic one. What about practicing? Why, when they are stoning women and killing them and raping in, uh, them in the street, women are not in the street? We are in the street, we say. We are going in the street to say our no, to show that mm. we are not only closing ourselves in the room to discuss how life is bad, but we also can act. We can also make a revenge. You recently wrote, you write a blog, and you wrote, and I have to use a word, because this is the word you use on your blogs, you said, our tits are deadlier than your stones. What you were referring to is, it was before a, the topless jihad day, is what you called it. Yes. You were doing this in support of a young Tunisian woman who was targeted by Islamists after she posted a photo of herself bare-breasted on her Facebook page. What's interesting, Ina, is there are a lot of Muslim women now who are against what you're doing, saying you're, actual, you're not helping us. Don't impose this on us. What do you say to them? I also gave an answer to them on the same blog, and mm. you, can, you can read it. But the thing is that um, I don't want anyone to be confused with what we are fighting. I don't care how many times you are praying during the day, in your room, or in your church, but I care about religion that is becoming political. I care about, about when, when religion is uh, touching our political and social life. And I care when girl who is posting topless picture uh, on Facebook have to be stoned because of that. I care about that and I'm fighting with that. And I'm dreaming, honestly, I'm dreaming about religion that is not appearing out of their houses or their churches. I'm dreaming about this world and I don't see the... Uh, and you know what I see when I'm dreaming about that? I don't see 9-11s, um, I don't see uh, stoning women, I don't see uh, Palestinian conflicts, I don't see all these things. And we are fighting for that. And I'm sorry, we don't care about if there are religious people who are raping or not religious. There are different ones. Mm. But if you do it in the name of religion, we are going to say that your religion is wrong. Let me ask you something. I want to show you a photo that went viral across the internet earlier this week. It was uh, one of your activists, also Ukrainian, you were telling me before the show. She, you can see her there. I'm not gonna tell our viewers what it's written in Russian on her back, but she was flashing Angela Merkel, and there you can see on the left, Putin. Now, let's look at Putin's expression. To me, correct me if I'm wrong, Ina. To me, Putin is surprised. Maybe he's pleasantly surprised, but I don't think he's saying, Oh my God, bare breasts, I'm gonna change my position on homosexuality. I'm, I'm gonna be a little easier on homosexuals now. What do you think of that? That's just shock. You see, you see his face that is smiling. After this picture, after this shot, he was doing this. And after, he was giving sexist comments saying that I didn't, uh, I didn't have time to see if they look nice or not, if they are blonde mm. or not. But while he was telling that, in 30 minutes after our demonstration, official Kremlin were um, uh, demanding from Germany to, uh, to open criminal cases against uh, activists. And while Putin was making sexist comments, we got four criminal cases against, uh, against oh. activists. And would you say that it's because he was pleased? or he was angry, or he was irritated. He what was is irritated, our, no, what is, no. What is our strategy is to put, uh, the, I'm sorry, the shit that is creating, that is treated as a cult, to put it down, to say that we are not caring but about you, and he, this is how it works. You know, let me, let me just ask you this, though, because you did get him angry. Obviously, he is angry right now. And my question is, though, is that the best way of making him come around to your views? You've provoked him. You've made him angry. Maybe now he's actually less inclined to change his laws. Maybe he'll say, I will be damned if I'm going to do what they want me to do. Listen, this guy is dictator. He is saying just recently, he said that Russia is not a country for, for gays. The same as in his time, Bush said that USA is not a country for atheists. This guy is, is not stopping and we are the one who is going to stop. Our strategy is to face him and to say personally, to attack him personally. Dictator, he doesn't care about opinion of people. That's why we are choosing personal attack that is really irritating him, that is putting him down. And in this way, system is showing uh, itself. In, in 30 minutes, we got four criminal cases because of attack of Putin, and uh, he gave sexist comments. You think that he doesn't, he doesn't think what okay. he's saying? Of course he's he saying, thinks... but the thing is that we're taking off masks from those people who are wearing masks. I understand it. You yourself, Ina, you're going to be going to the police station here in Paris. Yes. Tell our viewers why. 
We're going to police station to because um, big mosque of Paris complain against us because third of uh, April we burn a Salafist flag in front of uh, Salafist of, flag. Yes, it's in front the, of the black mosque. flag. Yes, black flag. And you got a summons to go to the police. Yes, I don't know exactly why. I will tell you maybe after. But uh, now we are going to to give an explanation why we did it. Have you? I, I know that the, the, uh, being against Islamism, and, and we were talking about this before. This is part of your message. Have you done this before? Have you burned flags before? Is this a, a new, a new uh, direction? It was. It was the first. Uh, it was a scenario that we used for the first time. Mm. But uh, famine, we always have special scenarios for each of the action. We never repeat anything. Okay. Finally, I just want to ask you. You know, you're you're now here in Paris. Um, I believe you're waiting to find out perhaps if you could stay in Paris. You you can't or don't want to go back to Ukraine. Because essentially, I want to, but I cannot. You cannot. You fear what will happen if you go back. What do you see the future, very briefly, right now, of your movement here? You have branches all across Europe. Very briefly. I had this question. We are people who are changing our strategies, who are thinking about strategies and changing our strategies every minute. Every new minute, we find a new way uh, to develop our movement. We find a new answers to our oppositioners, mm -hmm. and we find a new way how to catch Putin. And, and I will just, I, I will mention that you do actually, you were telling me before the show, you train people for your movement because there is yes. obviously sort of an instruction. Famine, famine movement for us, who, for those who participate during this action, for this activity, is, um, is a movement about personal transformation of women. All of us were transformed, and me personally too. And if you would meet me three years ago, you would never say uh, that it's the same person. Thank you very much for helping us better explain your movement what you're trying to do, what your goals are. Thanks to all of you for uh, watching the interview here on France Van Kaffs today. We've been speaking to Ina Shevchenko, a leading activist in the Femin group.